happiness is beautiful It's a kind of reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is George Ortega, and I'm here to talk about happiness because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. Tonight for our first show, I'm going to talk about why I decided to do this show. Okay, um, basically the, the main reason is because um, happiness is our main goal in life, and it's our, our basic motivator um, in, in everything we do. Um, it's, it's, it's why we work, it's why we marry, it's why we do what we do um, when we have leisure time. Whatever we, we're doing, whatever we're thinking, whatever we're saying, the point um, is always to feel pleasure, to diminish our uh, unpleasantness, and um, to have happiness or uh, have as much happiness as possible. Okay, um, another reason I, I'm doing the show is um, happiness is also it's the point of goodness. Um, generally, as a world, as a society, we, we value goodness a lot. Um, it's goodness is generally the, the point behind most religions. And the, the idea is that um, the, the purpose of goodness is to, uh, to seek happiness. We, we, we know, we value goodness but we, because we know that when we're good, we will, um, that goodness will be rewarded. You know, so um, so happiness is very important um, to to the goodness in life, and and this this doesn't apply just to um, to life here on Earth. I mean, many of us have a belief in an afterlife, so many of us believe in doing good in this world, so we will have great happiness in the world to come. Um, the Greek philosopher Aristotle actually considered happiness the highest good, you know, of all possible goods. He actually even devoted. Um, a book, um, an entire book uh, to it called Nicomachean Ethics. Um, then there's the, uh, the philosophy, there's a utilitarian philosophy that considers the measure of goodness as um, what brings the greatest happiness to the greatest number of people. So, um, so one reason I'm doing the, the show is because happiness really is a very important facet of our existence. Um, before I get into, um, you know, more details about what we can expect from the show and what I'll be doing. I just want to go briefly through um, what actually happiness is. Um, basically, you know, it, it's like, it's very simple. I mean, we all, we all recognize it. It's just uh, a feeling of enjoying life, of being satisfied with it. Uh, it's a feeling of, um, it's, a, it's a good feeling. It's a pleasant feeling, you know, feeling um, content and um, like things are going well. Um, it's actually a feeling that all of us are familiar with um, because we, we've experienced it since the first, at least since the first few hours after birth. Um, what's, um, what psychologists have determined is that um, during that time, um, during, um, during the first few hours, first few days, infants will smile. That's where, where smiles first appear and, um, and smiles are the, the, the expression, the behavior that, that is most indicative of happiness. Um, okay, and like, aside from the, uh, the conventional um, everyday understanding of what happiness is, there, there actually is a, a more scientific uh, definition of it, and that's given by um, a psychologist whose name is Ed Diener from the University of Illinois, Illinois, and he's actually the foremost authority on happiness throughout the world, and he divides happiness into four components. Uh, the first component is the exper experience of pleasant emotions. And that's like pleasant emotions, pleasant moods. And when we have pleasant emotions and moods, then that um, allows us to um, eventually have the pleasant state of happiness. And then um, the second component is um, to not experience unpleasant um, emotions and moods. Uh, so those two components are called hedonic because they relate to pleasure. And then there are other two components that relate to satisfaction. And so the third component is um, satisfaction with the domains of our life. Uh, the domains are like our work life, our married life, um, our friendships, our free time. Even it also extends to um, 
domains like, for example, our, our level of social freedom and, and political freedom. Um, you know, it's not just personal, it's also like global and political. And then the fourth component of happiness um, is basically satisfaction I of, um, in life as a whole, you know, the totality. It's called global satisfaction. Okay, um, one thing I'd like to point out about happiness is that there really is no wrong or right happiness. I mean, w however one obtains happiness, that happiness is genuine and valid. For example, a person could, um, could seek happiness by um, making a lot of money, by devoting one's life to just um, making as much money as possible. On the other hand, a person can um, achieve happiness by spending uh, his entire life meditating. So there, there really isn't um, a right, wrong way, um, necessarily a, a best or a worst way. There is, however, I think, um, I think morality does enter the, the equation, though, because I think um, there are right and wrong ways where, that we can um, arrive at happiness, and that relates to other people. And I, I think the basic rule might be that if our happiness is impinging upon the happiness of others, if, you know, by our becoming happier, happier, we're making it less possible for others to experience happiness or greater happiness, then I think we could um, fairly consider that not a, a morally correct way of arriving at happiness. Okay, um, so again now, here's, here's really one of the, one of the most important, um, the, the, the most important um, reason in a sense why, why I decided to do the show. Okay, um, here in the United States, um, there are about 89% of us who are happy. Um, now, th I've got to correct myself because in, in the previous show that I did, uh, Conversations in Mind, I would, um, I would cite that the figure was 80%, but I've, I've done more extensive research and, you know, fortunately it is, you know, 89, almost 90% 90 pr 90 of us are happy. Um, however, that really doesn't tell the whole story. Um, if, if you take the average level of our happiness from, from 1 to 10, that, that number would be nine, uh, 6.9. You know, we achieve an average level of 6.9 out of 10 in happiness, and um, that figure is actually given by um, one of the foremost psychologists in the world. His name is Martin Seligman, and uh, he just um, he wrote a book called Auth Authentic Happiness that was just published this year, and he's he's actually one of the top 100 psychologists of all time, um, and he's extremely well respected in his field. Um, basically, the way he got on this, that list is one of the criteria is how many times a psychologist is cited by other psychologists in their studies. So he's he's actually very well respected. So he cites that figure, and you know when we um, to kind of like analyze it, it's 6.9 out of 10 is kind of like 69 out of 100. And so, you know, if, if we were to give that a grade equivalent, you know, that would be like a 69 is like a, a D. You know, it, it's almost a C. So, um, and then, then another figure that, that Seligman cites in that book is that um, on average, we're happy just about 54% of the time. And again, if we wanted to give that a great equivalent, that would be, you know, that would pretty much be failing. Um, so even, again, even though 89% of us are happy, we're not all that happy um, given the, the level of our happiness and the time we spent being happy. Um, Seligman actually adds another figure that, that's interesting. Um, in 1994, he published a book called What You Can and What You Can't Change. And in that book, he cites that uh, at any given time in our society, about 25% of us are actually depressed. So that's, that's another kind of a, a figure that, that just um, demonstrates the, um, you know, the reality of our, our extent of happiness here in the United States. Um, as a world, we're, we're somewhat less happy, actually. Um, while 89% of us here in the United States are happy, if we take the whole global population as, as the, um, the target, we find that uh, only 73% of us are happy. And, um, and actually, like in some countries, for example, like in Russia and Belarus, only about 50% um, of, the, of their population there are actually happy. So, so happiness really is, um, you know, a global issue. 
Um, okay, the, this show is going to have like three basic purposes. Um, the first purpose is, is to inform White Plains residents about um, what, what research has taken place on happiness. And the reason I'm going to present those findings is then to, um, to give um, suggestions and advice based on those findings on how um, basically we could all become happier. Um, I, th I think it's, it's reasonable to s expect that um, if anyone watched, I would say, most of these shows for about three months or so, w one could um, reasonably expect um, a significant increase in their level of happiness if, if one uh, applies some of the principles. Um, the, um, so the third purpose, aside from, you know, um, just be, um, delineating the um, aspects of happiness and, and helping us to become happier, will be to to propose policy um, initiatives, both at, at, um, at the government level, at the business level, and, and media, that, um, that would help us become happier as a world. Um, the idea is that um, as a society, apparently, we don't value happiness so very much. And I think if we, um, if we began to understand it and, and see how important a role it plays in our, in our lives, then we could, as a government, as a people working together, really do a lot to, um, to raise the level of happiness, um, not just for ourselves, but for, for the rest of the world as, as well. OK, um, let's see. Uh, at, um, basically, each, each show will, will um, present a different topic. But at the end of each show, I'm going to try to present uh, a strategies and considerations segment where I go through a specific point um, uh, about happiness, uh, a point designed to, to, in a practical way, help us to, um, to understand happiness in order to increase our level. And, and these points will be based on, in general, on, on the research that has been undertaken. Um, and so, like, I think another point um, about the show is that um, rather than being like an inherently pleasant ac activity like um, many TV shows would be, um, it's, it's more information than entertainment. It's more of an investment in happiness than an actual, you know, quote unquote, pleasant experience. So it would be more like a, like a class or like, for example, working out uh, to, to build a healthier body. Okay. Um, now, I, I just want to go through um, some of the reasons why we're not really as happy as, as we could be, as really we should be, I think. Um, I think that the main reason is we, we've never really learned how to become very happy. Um, we all have the ability, but it's not something that's taught in school. It's not something that our, our government, um, especially federal government, re devotes any direct attention to. Um, there are virtually no businesses devoted to, um, to selling happiness, to selling, to helping us become happier for, for a price. And um, while there are books on happiness, um, these books are, for the most part, written by individuals who generally promote their own personal philosophy on happiness. And sometimes it's correct, sometimes it's not correct. But, um, but even, even, even those books have a somewhat limited audience, I suppose, because we as a society um, really, in general, um, don't value happiness as much as we could. Okay, so as, re as a result of, of our ignorance about happiness, um, we tend to seek it in ways that just aren't effective. For example, our, our number one strategy for increasing our level of happiness, uh, we think, is, is to make more money. And, um, but unfortunately, um, four decades of, of research on happiness has shown very clearly that money is very, very um, insignificant um, in, um, in relation to happiness. It really doesn't play that much of a role in, in, in increasing our happiness. Um, so for example, some people um, you know, think that if they win the lottery, they will um, become much happier. And well, what they found is they, they've actually studied lottery, lottery winners. And what happens is that um, during the first six months after winning a great deal of money in the lottery, um, the winners become much, much happier but then after those six months, their level of happiness generally returns to the level that it was before they won the amount. Um, then there, there are other um, strategies we seek, like um, seeking high status or seeking uh, knowledge or education. And again, these have been shown by, by research um, to not really influence happiness that much, if at all. Um, 
what's what's good news for some of some of us who aren't um, physically well is that um, health has been determined um, to not be such um, a great indicator of, of level of happiness. In other words, um, we're equally likely or it's equally possible for those of us who are not healthy to be as happy as those of us who are. And so I think that's good news for, for a lot of us who think that, you know, in order to be very happy, you know, one has to be really very healthy. Okay, um, I think more good news is that um, happiness, while happiness was studied um, since the 1960s, um, in the in the late 70s, they actually began to study it uh, in great detail. Um, and uh, actually, they, they began to study how to increase it. And so, um, so in, in in the late 70s, and um, there were three classic pub um, published studies on happiness that pretty much demonstrated that it's pretty easy um, to raise one's level of happiness through happiness training in a small amount of time. You know, in as little as, as two weeks, actually. So, uh, so these three st classic studies, uh, the first in 1977, the second in 1980, and the second in 1983, have really stood the test of time because um, in psychology they try to disprove results by replicating the studies, and these studies have, ha haven't been refuted or, um, in, in all that time. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do now is just concentrate a bit more um, on the third goal of the show, and that's promoting uh, policy changes um, in society to help us all become happier. And I, you know, I'm going to concentrate on what our government can do as opposed to what business and the media can do just, just briefly um, during this show. Um, okay, like with our government, the idea is that we have 14 departments, for example, in our federal government. We have departments of tra transportation, energy, education, health, health and human services, and all of these departments really have the implicit purpose of, of, of making us happier. I mean, you know, transportation is important because we need roads to get to work and we need work to make money or to, to just have a livelihood to become happier. Um, energy we need to, to fuel our cars and uh, heat our homes and, and light our homes and all. So all these departments really have specific aims, but in general, they all um, really serve to, to increase the, 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 um, the welfare, the happiness of, of us Americans. Um, however, um, considering that, that happiness really is um, our goal in life, it's, it's our main motivator, it's really why we get up each morning, you would think we would have a department of happiness. Um, however, we don't. We don't. And it's, um, you know, actually, as an aside, we, um, we don't have a, a department of goodness. And that, that I think, is, is equally um, baffling. You know, in, in terms of goodness, we do have a department of justice. And um, with, with justice, for example, we, we punish those who, who aren't good. And I suppose that's, that's um, you know, a good step in the right direction. However, I think we could potentially, um, you know, help our society a lot by also, um, you know, helping each other to, to know how to, how to be good, to value goodness, to see goodness as, as very important to one's happiness. And, uh, so an anyway, the, the first thing I think we could do is to create um, a department of happiness. And that does sound like a, a very um, idealistic and a very utopian idea. And um, so um, on an upcoming show on May 15th, I'll, I'll devote um, that show to happiness and government. And I'll explain that in, in more detail. Um, another thing I think we could do is, um, you know, we've got our kids go to school for for 12 years. You know, um, it, it's good. You know, they have to learn how to read, write, and um, do arithmetic and all. But um, I think within those 12 years, I think we we should um, devote a significant portion or, um, of that time to to teaching kids um, about what's most important in life, how to, how to be happy. Um, you know, again, it's been demonstrated scientifically that um, through a knowledge about happiness and through um, you know, certain training, it, it's very easy to, to learn how to become happiness so happy. So I think, I think we would serve our, our kids best, you know, by teaching them how to become happy. Right now, our educational system, to a certain extent, teaches our kids for their benefit, but a lot of it is actually for the benefit of society. It's, it's so that they can bec become productive workers in, in our workforce. But, um, 
teaching them happiness, I think, would, would really serve to make the, the experience much more valuable for them as well. Another thing I think our government could do is to encourage businesses to get into the business of happiness. Um, they could do that through tax incentives or um, guaranteed loans at all. Business really hasn't gotten into it yet, and um, again, it's, it's somewhat baffling as to why that hasn't occurred, but um, I think government, since we are the people, you know, government is us, you know, aside from special interests and all, so I think that um, it would be in our interest as a people to, to encourage businesses to, um, to do that. Um, another something else um, during our, our show conversations in mind um, I promoted the idea that we could have a, a happiness pill um, you know we have medications for everything um, you know or, or we try to get them we try to find medical solutions for for the different kinds of situations that confront us different illnesses and I think there's reason to to believe that uh, that we should um, consider unhappiness as an actual illness as something that, that we really don't have to accept and there may, there may actually be a pharmaceutical um, agent that could be developed to help us um, all become much happier. Um, right now there are antidepressants that help people who are depressed feel better, but generally those, um, those medications don't work on people who are not depressed. They don't, they don't work to make the person who is just somewhat happy, you know, much happier. And uh, I think um, another thing the, the media, um, the, our government could do is, um, for example, on, on cable TV, we have like so many stations, like, you know, 100, sometimes over 100, and we've got C-SPAN, which is devoted to, to Congress, to the House and the Senate, you know, their proceedings and all. But we really don't have a, um, a federal um, station devoted to the welfare of the people. I think that um, one station that, that is not you know, designed to make money for certain individuals, but it's designed to help us all become happier as a people, I think would really serve um, our country very well. Um, the last thing I want to deal with in terms of what the government, our government could do to, um, to um, help us become happier has to do with something that's, that's in the news now, and it's, it's a very timely um, matter, and that's, that has to do with ter terrorism. So I think basically um, our government, I think, could adopt as, as part of its foreign policy the idea of promoting greater happiness, um, specifically, I think, through happiness training. Um, we as a country have, have exported capitalism and free market democracy um, throughout the world because we believe in them. We believe that um, they, are, they serve the needs of the people. They, 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 in effect, actually make it easier for people to become happier. And that's actually demonstrated, for example, um, a, a country's level of freedom is actually a better indication of how happy they are than how wealthy they are. So, so I think we really could promote that. Um, okay. Um, and I think, you know, along with that, I think we have to promote the value of happiness. Um, happiness isn't just important because, um, because it's great to be happy, because it feels good, but I, I think it has importance that, that have to do with, with our, even our national security and the security of the world. And what I'm, what I'm, the idea that I'm trying to present is that um, terrorists are generally not satisfied. They're not satisfied with, um, with certain uh, political situations, um, uh, level of freedom, religious power and all. And, you know, people, terrorists like Arafat and, and bin Laden, um, they recruit um, from people who are not happy, who are not satisfied with either their personal lives or, or global issues. Um, some want more money, you know, just, they're just, they're not satisfied. And, and the reason I, I bring this up, um, like when we talked about the four com components of happiness, um, satisfaction was, was one of the four. Um, Actually, it's two of them. It's a global satisfaction and satisfaction in different domains. And, and these issues like pl uh, religious um, ideology and um, political freedom and all are actually uh, domains of satisfaction. So, um, so actually, you know, a lot of people who support the terrorists, even the terrorists themselves, believe that, that in order for them to be happy, they have to um, acquire these things. And, and also, you have to remember that these terrorists, um, ironically, are, are, are actually fighting. They're doing what they do for the happiness of, of the people they care about. Um, the, reali the reality, though, is that um, what scientists have discovered 
is that the only condition that really is necessary for happiness is that a person has to have enough to eat. You know, one's basic requirement has to have be fulfilled. So political freedom and, uh, and all these things are great for people, but they're just not all that necessary. And that's why I think if we promoted the idea of, of raising the, the level of happiness in the world, we could minimize the risk of, of um, terrorist acts. Um, I, I sincerely do believe that global happiness is probably the best deterrent to global terrorism. And I am going to revisit that issue in more detail on the May 14th show on happiness in government. Okay, um, basically I want to review just um, the connection now between happiness and goodness. Um, what studies have, have found over the years is that um, happy people tend to be better people they tend to be more compassionate. You know, that's been demonstrated in studies where they made little kids happier than asked them to do something for other little kids. And when they were made happier, they were much more compassionate and would help the other little kids out a lot more. So I think um, a good way to make our world a better world is to make us all happier. Okay, um, now I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna spend again some time at the end of each show um, in a segment on um, considerations and strategies to increase happiness. And I think we have time for one one of these tonight, um, and I think the one one I'm going to talk about is valuing happiness. Um, valuing happiness is extremely important because that sets the stage for everything else. You know, if we don't value happiness, we won't do the work that's necessary to increase it. And so, w when we understand that happiness is our main purpose for living, I think we we would um, tend to value it as much as it should be, and that would set in motion the kinds of activities and um, kinds of policies that, um, that could really help us all become much happier. Okay, well that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. In the future we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. This is George Ortega saying, be good, think well, feel very happy, and I hope you'll join me next Thursday night at 9 p.m. here on The Happiness Show. Happiness is powerful, it's our underlying need. Happiness is why we live each day, happiness is destiny. So let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy.